So when is the best time to reveal that big secret? And I'm going to come straight to you because you had a massive oh. secret for the whole of your life, really. Biggest secret possible. Yeah. I mean, there was one big secret that I never told my ex-wife, and that was that I never liked her Yorkshire pudding. <laughs> She'll be devastated. Only joking now. if she's watching. We're going very well. We're on very good terms. Well, but what about your son? Uh, my, my son, obviously, that was the hardest thing, keeping it secret f from him. Um, and very fortunately for me, when I did break the news, he was so mature, so open minded. He's only 17. And uh, he said it changes nothing. So, you know, I still have my son and I, I'm very aware that people in my situation aren't always so fortunate. Well, it's a difficult age at the best of times, yeah. isn't it? The teenage years and then mm. to have to take on board something so big. Um, what about um, dating now? If you, are you looking for a new partner? Oh. If, you, if you went on a date, would you oh. feel the need to say straight away that you were transgender? Or, Do you know or what? It's a real moral dilemma for me. Um, uh, my take on it is that... I wouldn't actually tell a date until I'd got to know them sufficiently mm. that I thought there was a possibility that something might happen mm. exactly, between yeah. us. There's no point yeah. in that. But I, would, I certainly wouldn't turn up and just splurge it out and gush mm. out. If I had a, a, an arthrit arthritic hip, I wouldn't say, hi, I'm Indian, I've got a bad hip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Whatever. and also, they might reveal something to you of that course. you don't like about them. Yeah. You know, why have you got to be the one ready to confess? Yeah. They might have something to say to you, Absolutely. you know. So it's a two-way street. What about you, street, Martina? Are you a sharer? I am a sharer, Ruth. <laughs> yes, I am. I do kind of like to share everything, because I think that... If you kind of think someone's got potential and you do really like them or you do feel like you've got a future with them... What do you mean them, they've got potential? You know, like they <laughs> How could... many boxes have they got to tick? Quite a lot. Quite a lot. <laughs> right, just check um, it. No, but I think, I think um, for me with Jack, when I met Jack, I sort of thought, if I can't tell you everything and you not love me warts and all... And I felt like I needed to share stuff with him. I felt like I trusted him enough that I could. So I think that's important. Yeah, but why do you, I'm, I find that interesting? Because mm. why do you feel the need to share? Is it to to get it off your chest? Because you, you kind of, you know, give you hand that to somebody. Now I don't know what your secrets are. Maybe you haven't got any, but it could be a big secret. Mm. You hand that to someone, they have to deal with your secret too. Yes. So are you doing that? Because it, does it make you feel better? It doesn't necessarily make them feel better. No, I don't think it's like, you know, someone said to me once, you know, that needy is greedy. And I think being needy is something different. I think that sharing something with them that you feel like would be of benefit for them to know that might be uncomfortable for you to say. Mm. You know, there's been times that maybe, for instance, I had um, a brief relationship with somebody and I'm going to be working with them and I want mm. Jack to know. I don't want him to well, hear from somebody else. you mean you had a one-night stand? Not a one-night stand, <laughs> even. But it could just be yeah. a kiss. It could have been a drunken yeah. snog. It could have been anything. But I don't want him to hear it second-hand news. I want him to hear it from me. Mm. I don't want to make him look silly or foolish mm. in front of anyone. And also, there's things about myself that I'm still coming to terms with and talking these, these, through these things with him helped me realise so much about myself. I'm always evolving. Him. I'm always changing. I'm still getting to know myself. So I think as much as I try and tell him as much as I can, sometimes I wake up and he goes, oh, who are we today? <laughs> <laughs> what Martine have I got today? I actually think it would be really, really creepy if you met somebody on a first date and they just gushed and spat so everything out. I, I might have them. been that person once. Scary. <laughs> I, I don't tell anybody someone. anything. <laughs> Not even us. I, no. <laughs> I mean, I only reveal on a need-to-know basis. Yeah. yeah. So I don't tell people very much. Keep you the think... mystique. Keep the mystique, and everybody knows different things about me. So I like to think of myself as Janet the Jigsaw. You all know a little bit. But that's nice, because you have but different But it won't friends. even necessarily add up no. to a whole puzzle, because, <laughs> no. believe me, there's parts of me that I'm going to keep to myself, because that's all I've got. At the yeah. end of the day, yeah. Yeah. it's mine. Sure. Why, why, should I, why should I blather it all out to you? But when, but when people get together, you know, in that first flush of romance, a lot mm. of people do like that. So, relationship history, and I think... Well, at my don't don't track record, that. I don't on the, generally I'd be having sex on the first date, and if there wasn't, any, if it wasn't any good, there wouldn't be a second date. <laughs> so, you wouldn't want to really... Cut to the chase, Janet, cut to the chase. But honestly, how much chat do you have to go through? <laughs> I imagine if I was in the next... in a table, in a restaurant, on the next table to Martine on one of her dates, she'd be blabbering. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd be having one drink, making a, a really crude assessment, <laughs> then cut out. That would be handy, wouldn't it? Well, wouldn't just that cut be to handy? The chase. If you do, if there's certain things that you could find out a bit sooner, because I have yeah. had that with a few mm. friends where they've kind of done the whole whining and dining, get emotionally connected, and then it's rubbish in bed. They're rubbish yeah. in bed. <laughs> really fit. My dad also said, "Go to pudding first. <laughs> For more loose women action, click here. 
and I'd subscribe if I were you. It's totally free and it means you'll be kept up to date with new videos and exclusive YouTube content.